Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When creating payroll formulas, you enter the actual formula calculation into the formula text box. You should be extremely familiar with how Peachtree creates its formulas before attempting to create your own. Many users will not have to perform this action, as most of the necessary equations are provided by Peachtree. For additional lists of formula terms and items, you can look in the Help menu of Peachtree for formulas. Let's review some of the common elements of formula equations to get you started. One of the main elements of a formula is an equation. Now, each payroll calculation consists of one or more equations. So if a formula has multiple equations, they're always separated by semicolons. For example, answer equals negative 250, for example. Or in this case, as shown on screen, answer equals negative taxable gross times percent. You will also have constants, and these are numbers that are used in equations. They can only appear on the right side of the equal sign within an equation, and they can only contain numbers or decimal points. You also have variables, and variables are numbers or letters that represent numerical values. During an equation, an expression is calculated, and the result is stored to a variable. There are also several standard variables listed in the help files. They can appear on either side of an equation, and they have a few rules as to their use. First, if you want to set a variable's value, then the variable must appear on the left side of the equation. To use the value that's been assigned to a variable, the variable must appear on the right side of the equation. The variable answer is required in every formula, and it must appear at the beginning of the last equation within the formula. You also have identifiers. And identifiers are similar to a variable in that they are words that stand for values. However, the value of an identifier is known before the formula is evaluated. There are several standard identifiers listed in the help files. Now, an example would be adjusted gross. That just uses the employee's adjusted gross as defined in the setup of the adjust section for the tax that's being calculated. Each payroll field and each pay level can also be used as an identifier. So for example, fed underscore income. Now you also have functions. And functions are mathematical operations that are performed on variables, identifiers, or constants in order to arrive at the value that's used in an equation. They can only appear on the right side of an equation. For example, the YTD function could be used as A equals YTD Fed Income. That would determine the year-to-date value of the Federal Income Tax Payroll field, which you would then store to the variable identified as A. So within this equation that we're looking at, we have taxable gross equal year-to-date limit. The year-to-date limit is the function. In this case, using the adjusted gross and the limit. You also have operators. Operators are your standard mathematical operators. They use the standard order of operations as well. So you can use the plus sign to add, the minus sign to subtract, and the asterisk to multiply, and so on and so forth. So here you can see the answer is taxable gross times percent, with the asterisk being times, or multiplication. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.